What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're watching this video, you've got an issue with your AR. Whether you're undergassed, whether you're overgassed, failure to feed, fire, extract, and eject. Something's going on. In this video and in the subsequent videos, we're going to go over every single one of those issues, how to recognize the symptoms, how to diagnose it, and how to fix it. As with all the videos we do, make sure that whenever you're working with a firearm, especially one that is suffering from malfunction, the first step is always ensuring that you are clearing the rifle safely. Let's go into the video. What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench. And today we're going to be talking about undergassed AR. Now an undergassed AR shows up in a lot of different ways. It may show up as a failure to feed, failure to eject, failure to extract, all those things, common elements come down to one thing, then that is most likely an undergassed AR. So what we mean by undergassed is that when you pull the trigger, the cartridge expands, the projectile goes down the barrel followed by all of those gases the gas is redirected through the gas block, through your gas tube, back into your system, reciprocates your bolt, and your bolt comes back. So if your system is undergassed, when those gases come up, there's not enough gas to move the bolt back enough or far enough for it to either one, lock back, or two, go back far enough for it to chamber the next round. So a lot of those issues are typically fixed by realizing that your gun is undergassed. The first thing that you want to do to check this, and this is my go-to check on every gas-operated firearm that I have. It's to do a one round mag test. And simply, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get one round, put it in your magazine. Okay. All right. So for these purposes, since we're indoors and we're gonna do this responsibly and safely, we're gonna use a snap cap here, an inert round. Obviously, if you're doing this test, you're doing it on the range where you can shoot safely, okay? So I think that should go without saying. So get your one round, you're gonna place the magazine into your rifle, you're gonna charge the rifle, and you're gonna let the bolt slam home. Don't ease it home, anything like that. The AR is designed for all the way back, and let it go and let that bolt fly home so it can seat itself and the round. Once you've done that, you're gonna basically fire the round okay so take aim at your target down range pull the trigger and fire the round now when that happens one of two things is going to happen okay when you fire that bolt is going to reciprocate back your casing should come out and that bolt is either gonna lock back or when you go to look at it afterwards, it's either going to still be in the closed position. So if after you fire, you look on the side of your rifle and that bolt is locked in the back position, you are not undergassed. You have passed the undergas test. So that is not your problem. What we're going to talk about today is when you fire that round and you go to look and that bolt is still forward. Okay, that is a fail. You have failed the one round mag test. So in that case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna empty your magazine. You're going to clear the rifle and look and see, did your shell extract? Okay, chances are it probably did. If it didn't extract, you are seriously under gas to the point of uh, that bolt didn't even get enough that far back. So you're seriously undergassed if that cartridge is still in there or that case is still in there, or maybe it's hung up like this, you've got it stuck in, or it is somewhere in the, in the chamber still. 
where it didn't ex extract the, the cartridge out of the, the chamber. You know you're under gas. So what do you do? Where do you look? How do you fix this? Guys, this is a really, really easy fix. First thing we're gonna do, you're gonna open up your rifle and we're gonna look at our lower. Specifically, we're gonna look at our buffer spring. So, know what kind of rifle you are running. If you're running a carbine, a rifle, or a pistol, notate that. You should be running the spring that goes with your specific gas system that you're running. It's either gonna be a carbine spring or a rifle spring. The difference between the two, a carbine spring has 37 rings. Count them all the way up, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 37. A rifle spring should have 43. At no point ever are you to get a rifle spring from 43 and cut it down to 37 or cut a 37 down more to mitigate the issue. The coil spring is set at that specific coil amount for a specific reason. Cutting them will not fix your real problem. It may fix it, but it's not the reason why your gun is under gassed. Second thing you're gonna check is you're gonna look at the buffer spring itself. Now, a carbine buffer spring should be around 10 inches 10 and 1 16th inches to be exact. So you want to look and see is your rifle or is your spring no less than that? Okay, so in here we're good. If you're dealing with a rifle spring, it should be 11 and 3 quarters inch long and it should be about there. It should be no less than that. So once you've confirmed that you are using the correct rifle spring, or carbine recoil spring. You can place that guy back in. And now we're gonna look at the buffer. In an under gas system, you are most likely using a buffer that is too heavy. It's not, there's too much mass coming back from the gas that you are giving the rifle and that buffer spring is not working together, I should put it this way, with the buffer to get it back far enough to allow the bolt to move back far enough. So lighten up your buffer. The standard buffer is three ounces. So I would start with a standard weight buffer first, three ounce buffer. So if you've checked all of these things, 99.9% .9 of the time, this is your fix. Just go to a lighter buffer. But let's say you do. Let's say you go to a lighter buffer, you go to that three ounce buffer, you do the one round mag test and it still fails. Now what? So now we're gonna go into the physical gas system of the rifle. For explanation and display purposes, we're gonna use one that I already have broken up. So your gas block and your gas tube. Let's make sure one, you're using the correct length gas tube for the system that you're using. What you wanna make sure is that take a look inside here and you'll see that gas tube right here. You want to ensure that that gas tube is coming no further than two thirds into this little cutout right here. This is going to ensure that when your bolt is going, it's gonna be going down this way, but when your bolt is going in and resetting that that gas tube is mating up with the bolt carrier group. If it's too short, it's not going to have a really good seal or it may not even seal at all. If it's too long, chances are you're not even going to be able to fire the rifle because the bolt won't even be able to get the round into the chamber. It's going to stop short. Very easy visual inspection to do. If you're looking good, then next thing you're going to have to check is the physical gas block itself. If you're using one of these low profile gas blocks that none of your set screws have come out. When this gas block is installed on the barrel, those set screws keep it from turning. If it turns, 
the gas port on your barrel will not marry up with the gas port on your gas block, therefore restricting any gas at all from coming through and allowing the gun to cycle. If you have it slightly off, you may be slightly blocking the gas from coming in and coming through. If these look tight and they look good, another thing you can do is take the whole thing off, take the gas block off, and physically inspect the barrel and the gas port. Get a little Q-tip or something in there, make sure that there's no obstructions, that it's going directly into the barrel. You can actually see, let's see if we can do this. You can actually see that this is going into the barrel. You see that down there? That knows we have no obstructions in our barrel. Check the gas port on your gas block. It's sitting right here. Make sure that it meets up with the port on your gas tube. You can just kind of use a little pick and you should be able to feel it. That hole in there that marries up, ensuring these two are aligned together. The other problem is making sure that this guy, your gas block port, is in line with the port on your barrel. Now, if you fired a few rounds through it, what will happen is that port will start to create a little bit of a tattoo mark. Now, if you guys can see, it's light, but it's visible when I'm looking at it. The camera may not do it, but you can see there's a little bit of a ring right here. And you can see that that ring fully encompasses the port on the barrel. So I know that this guy and this guy are set up perfectly. Let's assume we go through all of that and we're still failing the one round mag test. We're starting to run out of options, but there are two more things that we can look at. The physical gas bolt carrier group itself. These set screws on your bolt carrier group should be staked in two places, right there and there on either side. This ensures they don't back out. If they back out, then your gas key is going to be loose. You may even, if you go and you fail this, you may even feel this a little bit loose. The gas tube, right, it marries in here, like so. When that gas is coming through, it's sending it in here and it's coming out of all these little ports. If it's loose, it's going to start to leak around the sides here and you're going to lose a lot of that pressure. If it's staked, chances are they're not backing out. Just give it a little wiggle, make sure it's in there tight. All right, so here's the last thing that you can do. And this is if whenever I get a bolt carrier group, whether it's from a gun show or I get a brand new one, I always do my own little test. I call it the bolt carrier group stand-up test. And what this means is you put this on a hard surface like so and stand it up with the bolt extended. If it can stand up on its own, it's okay, it's fine. What I've seen, and this is through personal experience, guys, I've bought bolt carrier groups from gun shows, and I will do this right on the dealer's table. I'll extend it out, and I'll set it up, and the thing will fall down on itself. It will just collapse. Now, what that means, and this is a really easy fix, the gas rings on your bolt which are these guys right here, there's three of them, are worn out. Now when those gas rings seat inside of your actual bolt carrier group, they create somewhat of a seal. Not airtight, right? But a seal nonetheless that allows this to sit and has a little bit of tension when you're pulling and pushing out the actual bolt. If those fail, it means that this is really loose. There's not that additional tension in there. And all you need to do is replace, oh man, look how dirty that is. All you need to do is replace 
those gas rings and they're fairly cheap to fix and fairly easy to fix as well. So if you go through all of those particular scenarios, I can pretty much guarantee that you will find the culprit for your undergassing. There is one more thing that it can be. It could be your ammo, right? But we're not gonna talk about that because ammo is a completely separate issue. You may have a bad load, which is why I suggest you do that one round mag test at least five times. Try different ammos. Don't use the same one. Maybe you had a bad batch. Eliminate that variable straight from the get-go and now go into your physical rifle. And I promise you, go through those. You're going to find your issue. Go back, do the one round mag test, and you're going to be fine. The very last thing that I'll add to this, I know I said the ammo was the last thing, but if you have an adjustable gas block, check your adjustable gas block, okay? If you need to open it up, open it up. If you need to turn it down, turn it down. I think that should go without saying, but sometimes we forget what we have on our rig. So if you have an adjustable gas block, open it all the way up and then do the one round mag test. And if you're still failing with the gas block all the way open, then go into all of this. So guys, I hope that video helped you out. If you haven't, check out some of the other videos, check around the channel. We've got videos on all kinds of malfunctions, how to diagnose them, how to clear them, how to fix them. So make sure that you check that out. If there's something that I didn't touch on or maybe something that's just not working for you, you can't quite figure it out, go ahead, drop me a line. There it is. And I will be sure to get back to you. Also leave your comments below and I'll get back to them as well. So as always, guys, make sure that you're practicing safe weapons handling at all times and treating every weapon as if it was loaded. God bless America. G2 out.